a very calm, gentle spirit. So we want to welcome you and to bless us as God has put it in your heart. I think we stand. Stand. Yeah. Good morning. Good morning. morning maybe this one hi everyone hi are we okay so as we are standing let's fill the seats at the front let's be together <laughs> together you know maybe that seat could have your name could be having some things an angel dropped as a pep was praying you could just be you do not want to miss it you know god is so slippery and the thing about the things of the spirit is we never really understand um the impact of things that look very simple um but they are powerful uh Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I bless you this morning. Holy Spirit, you continue to, to, com to, to we are all struck by you, Lord. We are amazed at how you do what you do, Lord. And even as we continue into this um, moment of the word, I pray that you would speak through me, Holy Spirit, that it would not be my words, but it would be your words. And so help me to... To, to walk through what you've placed in my heart and help us to receive it in the name of Jesus. And help, may that word be, may we be that soil that receives and bears fruit a hundredfold. May we not be the soil that receives, but then things happen and the word is lost. May we be that that bears a hundredfold, a hundredfold um, of the word that you place in our hearts. We bless you for this, that we are here. This is a special moment for us. We thank you that you chose us to be here to receive from you and we give you glory and honor in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. We may have our seats. So he continues to demonstrate. I, I love the way the Holy Spirit works because he's continuing to demonstrate his um, power. No, I hadn't. I hadn't talked to Shitakwa. And today's um, word was on gates. So I feel like, I feel like, to be honest, like I've received the word. I feel like I can, like we can just sit and then we're like, yeah, it's, yeah. Da it's done, right? Because it's done, right? Isn't it done? It's already sealed in the Holy Spirit. So I feel like he's, you know, because last Sunday we were supposed to talk about the Holy Spirit. Then he moved and he demonstrated his power. I feel like today he's unpacking that power, but just showing us who is at work. Right? So I was so, um, I don't know what word to use. I was like, wow, Holy Spirit, because everything, like I was listening to Shitako and I'm like, wow, I, I was, you had asked me to share that. You had asked me to speak on that. You had asked me to do that. And I was like, yeah, you're just sealing that which you've already released. So we receive that sealing by the Holy Spirit. Isn't that amazing? Don't you feel special? Yeah. I don't know. Because, um, yeah. Because imagine, today was on gates. Today was on gates. And when I was preparing, because I asked him, do you want me to unpack the word you gave me last time about the Holy Spirit? He said, no, you need to talk about gates. So I went to gates. Then I felt a particular leaning on gates. Then I asked him, should, I, should it be gates off? He said, no, the word is gates. And then Apostle Angie broke them down in her prayer. You, remember, you know how many? Yes. All the, all the gates. Yeah, the nations. Yeah. 
the, the gates. Because he was asking, which are these gates that we're accessing? And you know the way when he gives you a word, um, one of the things I was taught when I, I got born again is that, and it's so interesting that I was taught when I got born again, not even when I had started sharing anything on a pulpit, but the lady who prayed for me to get born again told me that anytime you're about to share the word of God and it doesn't minister to you, there's something wrong with that word. So for me, I've been sitting with this word and it's really been doing all sorts of things because the, the Lord is saying we are in that season of access where we need to step into our gates. We're in that season of access where we need to step into our gates. And we have an exercise later on. But what he was saying is that in, the season, in that season of access, you know when you're about to step into a new place? Because when you step into something in God, it's glory to glory. So you're moving to another level. Most times when you move, it's a promotion. When you see an emphasis on God testing us in, so now I'll just flow with him. I, I don't think, I'll just go with how he's going. There's a scripture he gave me that was um, about there's a scripture, just give me a sec. He says in Psalms 11, 4 to 5, it says, the Lord is in his holy temple. The Lord's throne is in heaven. His eyes see, his eyelids test the children of men. The Lord tests the righteous. So, that's Psalm 11, 4 to 5 in the Amplified. The thing about seasons of promotion is that they are preceded by a test. And the thing about test is that we have to be discerning enough to know that it's not the enemy, it's the Lord. And then what usually happens is when there's a test, what happens in, a, in an exam room when there's an examination? The teacher who usually jokes with you when she's teaching you, sits with you, what, what happens to the teacher? They become serious. And then what happens? They go quiet. So have you been feeling like your relationship with God has shifted a bit? Like he's quiet on some things and you're wondering what's going on? Has that been happening? Because it has been happening to me. And I'm like, God. But I know he's there because I can sense him. I can feel him. He's guiding me still, right? When I pray, he's there. When I'm going through my day, he's there. But there are some things he's really quiet about. Then he's gone a step further and he's saying, there are a few things he's demanding of us. So what happens in a season of promotion again? Whatever was an assignment in the last season, there are a number of things you have to complete. So number two, what are the things you have that are outstanding? And Shitako actually said it. What are the things that are outstanding that you have? I don't know. Let's write them down. What is it? Take a minute. I hope you have a pen, paper, or a phone. What is that thing that you have that's outstanding? It could be an instruction is given you higher. For some, he's saying some instructions are instructions that he gave seasons ago. Seasons ago. Not, they're not even instructions for this season. He gave them like a while ago. And you've been jumping into new seasons, new seasons, but there are still some instructions you carry with you. You, you just know at the back of your head, there's this thing I've not done that I need to do. And some of them are very Simple, 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 simple. Change your hairstyle, simple. Like very simple instructions.
Then the thing about why he's emphasizing is because there are so many doors in the spirit that are ready to burst open, but they are huge. This promotion we are about to walk into is not your normal thing. That's why there's a bit of an emphasis as to how you go into it. So he's like, it's ready, but you need to be ready. And your read, my readiness, our readiness, is having completed what is remaining. So we have to ask him what that looks like. I remember in the last season, before the, the last major transition I had before I transitioned, um, I knew it was a transition, but for some reason it was taking a bit longer than, you, than I had thought. Then one day I had a dream, and the Lord showed me there was a project at work that I'd been working on, and He said, As soon as you're done with this project, is when you'll transition. And He showed me in the dream, two angels who walked into the gate of where I was working. And in the, when they walked in, they were holding a book. And in the book, what it said was, she has not completed this project. And it showed me which project, like the name of the project. And the angel said that she will move when she completes the project. So I knew what it was. So what I did is I focused all my attention on that project. I just knew this is it. I said, I'm not going to be distracted by anything else. This is what I'm completing. And believe me, immediately I completed that project. A few weeks later, I transitioned. So last night, the same thing happened. He showed me what needs to happen. And when Apept was praying for us and she asked, what do you need for, from this anointing? I said, may I need to, the anointing to complete what is remaining. <sighs> because it's a Kairos moment. And the thing with Kairos is time, time. There's a time sensitivity. It's not open-ended. It's not an open-ended contract, like, you know, whatever. So I was praying for God's mercy. I was like, I, mercy, mercy, God, grace strength, everything we've received this morning. So what do you need to complete? What you need to complete? And what is it that you're completing? So that it's not that moment where it's like, was it Nebuchadnezzar who was a writing on the wall, teke teke, you know, you have been weighed and found wanting. Because in the seasons of transitions, when you're being tested by God, He's weighing, He's measuring, He's checking. <coughs> is she ready? And then the enemy is up there. Hata hajafanya. Let me give you an, a simple instruction we got for this particular season. That's why we have to be sensitive when you come into the house of God. Because of that yoke thing. Last Sunday, we received an instruction to ask for forgiveness from our parents. I don't know if you've noticed that we're in a season of honor will get you to the next level. If you've not done it, I'm not going to ask you as whether we did it or not. But I'm just giving you an example of simple instructions we've received that could have a big impact on your movement. Is like that one. Because it was a moment in the Holy Spirit. So it wasn't manufactured by man. And we were told, go ask for forgiveness. Why is it important? Because there's in seasons of access, there are some keys that get you to the next. Every door requires a certain key. Every level of access 
requires us to approach it in a certain way. So what is what are gates? Um, gates are places of access. It's a legal access point. A gate is a legal access point. Now, in the Old Testament, what used to happen is that every city had a gate. And the cities or the towns that didn't have a gate, because a gate assumes there's a wall already, so it meant that they were exposed. And that's why you'd find like in the scripture that says, and the Lord is a wall of fire around her. It's like there's that covering, that protection, that your enemies cannot just walk in. Now, why, why didn't the kings, just think about it, even when you look at the movies that used to be there, why didn't the kings break down walls to get into cities through the walls? When the walls broke, the, the instance we saw a wall breaking was protocol being broken by, by the wall of Jericho. That was supernatural. Because what happened is, the wall that time, came down as a result of praise, which was an instruction. So everything was flattened, everything, including the gates, everything about Jericho. And the children just came in. That was supernatural, because in, in those days, what used to happen is that for you to have legitimate, for you to conquer legitimately, you had to conquer through the gate. So you couldn't go through the wall. The word of God, actually, there's a verse I found, it says that the person who, the one who goes through the wall is considered a robber and a thief. So there was no honor in that. So the kings had to go through the gates. And what used to happen is when they got to the gates, they would go and they would ram the gates. They would, you know, they had the rams because the gates had the hinges, then they had the doors, and some of those gates were double doors. So it says in the word that they were double doored. Yeah, so they had to ram through. And, and so to gain access to the city. And once a king rammed through and uh, um, besieged the city and its king, he had legitimate access to everything that belongs in that city. So no one could contest. And, and they, they took over the territory. So you can imagine when you're talking about gates, even uh, like the way Apostle Paul was saying, a great and effective door is open, but there are enemies. There's too much activity that happens at gates. Um, so many things. So it's a place of access. It's a place where judgments were rendered. Um, so you can imagine even when there's a contention and the enemy is saying, why? Why? So that's why we have to be in uh, repentance. Because there are some things that we can only access through the blood of Jesus Christ, right? Um, at the gate, the word was proclaimed. At the gate. Um, priests performed their duties at gates. Even at idolatry. You see, that's why even that prayer for breaking addictions, those are gates. You know, those are idolatrous gates. Because an addiction is something that you're so attached to, it has power over you. Gates were seats of authority. At the gates, wisdom was uttered. Um, it's at the gates that justice was administered. Um, in terms of governance, the councils of states were held at the gates. Even the Lord said that, that thou art Peter, upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. You know, gates were places of battle, battle for access. So we see a lot of activity at the gates. And gates represent authority, prominence, and power. So like in Genesis 12, 17, and 18, it says, your descendants will take possession of the gates of their enemies. So it means, you know, we will take possession the kingdom of God, has, the kingdom of the world has become, the kingdoms of the world have become the kingdoms of our God. It's us taking authority, prominence, power over the gates of hell. That's why it was so important that the descriptions of the gates came first, right? So that we know which gates are these. And there are so many gates because they are personal gates, gates of the eyes, gates of the ears, gates of the 
our hearts are gates. So, what is this about gates that we are accessing? What is it we need to access? Why do we need to go through gates? It's because all these promises God has given us, that's what we are accessing. We are accessing the promises of God on our lives. And they are everything. We have so many promises. Family, wealth. Like, think about all the promises you have of God. Who you are supposed to become, your life, your destiny. So all these things are what we are accessing. Right? That's why we have to go through the gates. But then, there are protocols to accessing the gates. Um, so thinking about if a man is a gate, what is the protocol of having a relationship with a man in your life who is a gate or a woman? Because if there are protocols to accessing gates, then how should we approach these gates? So one of the protocols we see, and there are many, in 2 Chronicles 23, 19, it says, He stationed gatekeepers at the gates of the house of the Lord so that no one should enter who was in any way unclean. Have we seen an emphasis on consecration? There's been an emphasis, right? All leading towards the gate. Then it says, Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. So there's a posture. These are the things you must do. It says the career. It says, Speak true to one another. Render true and sound judgments in your gates. Let's talk about judgment a bit. And I'm going to connect it with um, yoke. So, the thing about um, the yoke and why the yoke is featuring is because there is a sensitivity to how we receive God and his word in this season because it's very timely. So we can't be casual. So he was demonstrating to me like two weeks ago, I was talking about uh, burdens. Like I was talking to a friend of mine, you know the way you, we were assessing our balls, we were saying, you know we have, the, the way the glass, you remember that analogy of the glass and the big balls? You put the big balls first, then you put the small balls, then the sand. So there are those, so we were assessing our big five balls. Eh? So we were saying, you know, these balls are my responsibility. There are, so we were talking about how they can become a burden such that you're carrying this thing you think you should be carrying. Then I realized, actually, it's not my role to carry my family. It's not my role to carry the, whatever it is that the big five balls are. It is actually my role to give them to Jesus and say, here are the things that I'm concerned about. Give him my yoke. And a yoke used to be that thing they used to put on the oxen. You know that, like a mbao thing? Then in the Bible, it's, it, it, it represents slavery, bondage, being yoked. Yeah? So that's why it says, you know, and when you grow tired, you shall break the yoke off your neck with the anointing. So the thing about yokes is that they wear you down such that you can't move and do the things that you need to do. And then the word of God says, take up his yoke, which is easy, and his burden, which is light. What, what it in essentially is saying is that if you leave, if you, if you stop carrying these things that are not yours, because right now, if we think about the things that are weighing us down, let's be honest, 99.9999% of those things have nothing to do with us, even though they are connected to us. Because I'm not the savior for my family. But if I don't lay it down, if I don't lay my burden down and I'm carrying it, how is he going to carry it? Then when we come in here, we are so weighed down by our thoughts, by the things that have been worrying us over the week. We can't receive what he's releasing. Yet it is what he's releasing that we need to move into whatever we need so that our lives can change and the lives of those who are looking up to us can change. Are you seeing the paradox? So we have to leave. So you're saying, Dockers, view MMM, like you know, it's the altar. When you get to the door, just say, Lord, take every burden I give you. Me, I am receiving what is mine. Because when you look at one of the gates, um, one of the gates that are prominent in the word of God is the story of um, Jacob. <laughs> hey, Jacob. Jacob the first instance, when he was running away, he had that vision of the ladder in Genesis 28, 17. Then he said, he was afraid and said, how awesome is this place? This is none other than the house of God, and this is the gate of heaven. 
Then he went, he spent 20 years, you know, his story, got two wives, he labored, then he came back. Then when he was coming back, he was afraid of Esau, his brother, because he had stolen from him his birthright. So he was afraid. So he had sent his family, he had sent gifts to go ahead of him, you know, like four times before he could meet Esau and instructed his servants. Then now he released his family to go one way, then he was left alone. After they had crossed, um, I think they had crossed like a, there's a place they had crossed. Then when he was left there, in Genesis 32 it says, so Jacob was left alone, and a man came and wrestled with him until daybreak. When the man saw that he had not prevailed against Jacob, he touched his hip, his hip joint, and Jacob's hip was dislocated as he wrestled with him. Then he said, let me go, for day is breaking. But Jacob said, I will not let you go unless you declare a blessing on me. So he asked him, what is your name? And he said, Jacob. And he said, your name shall no longer be Jacob, but Israel, for you have struggled with God and with men and have prevailed. So God was saying, how are you going to wrestle for your promises? How are you going to come to talk with me? How are we going to do business together if you're carrying the burdens and the weights? That's what he was saying. Because he was saying, you need to leave them there. When you get into this place, do business with me. And I was like, we're talking about mantles. We received mantles last Sunday. I've been thinking about that. And I've been thinking about the, our father's mantles, the fathers of this nation, our father, Apostle Angie. And I was asking God, how come the supernatural miracles that were following our fathers, we are not seeing them this day? Why are we not seeing them? You know, that, I was really, um, by the way, I've been really concerned because we should be seeing supernatural outbursts of, as a result of what we carry. So I was asking God, what is it? And I was like, just study what they did. What, what did someone like Evangelist Oerimo do to get what she got? You know, angels coming to pay her rent. Asians giving her, do you know the property that she has in Gara she was given by an Asian? Given by, given. Given. We're having that discussion the other day. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. 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 Wow. Mm. Mm. Yeah. For her. Mm. He could? Yeah. 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 Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Rachel. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 So there's that place where I feel like we need to wrestle. So yeah. that we are now able to cross over. Yeah. Yeah. And it's it's true. And that's what he was saying. Like we can't wrestle with the burdens. Like imagine you're trying to get what is yours, but you're carrying. We can't. So it's that place of the supernatural. What is it that we are receiving from God in the wrestling? And what do we need to do? Because all those people, as Apepta said, they had, they had their own thing going on, their own revelation. Um, Reverend Evangelist had to let go of the right to her father's land for her to receive. What is it that God is asking you to let go of and you're finding hard? And what is it that he's asking you to do that you're finding hard? Because every one of us has our own unique special instructions. What is it that you're feeling, I cannot leave this place until I get 
What is it that we have to resolve for? Because even I felt like that. I felt like we're in a season where when we come in here, MMM, when we pass that door, we are doing business with God. Me, I'm like, I'm not leaving this room, Papa. Please, until, 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 what is your until? Like Hannah, she prayed until. And the thing about God, I think he's teaching us who he is. There are even some things we can demand for that are just because we are the kings and the priests. What, what are our, what, what do we want? Because there are some things we can ask for that are not even part of what he's already, pro like we can have a conversation. There's that room, he's saying, as we are crossing over, can we, to Jadiliane, are you getting? So what are those discussions you're putting on the table, I'm putting on the table, here. That's why I was like, even if the service ends up being another prayer service, me I didn't mind. I was like, because we need the power of God. What, if he says this is what you need right now, that's what I need. So like, it's okay, let's, let's go with the way he wants it until we get where we need to go. So what are some of those things? What are the things that, um, when you're in that place of transition, because you see, as Apepta said, he was left there alone to wrestle. And it, 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 it even answers that question we always ask, how come our family is blessed, or who is blessed? We seem like we are the ones who are waiting still. So we're in this place where we also need to cross. <laughs> so what are those things? Then it comes to say, so Jacob called it the, the gate of the camp of the Lord. In Second Chronicles, we see again Hezekiah. It says, Hezekiah appointed the divisions of the priests and the Levites by their divisions, each according to his service, both the priests and the Levites, for burnt offerings, peace offerings, to minister and give thanks and to praise in the gates of the camp of the Lord. Remember, we are in the season of priesthood. You remember? So how do we access so we have to access by faith. And that's why the, the main scripture for this particular uh, gates is, I mean for the gates, is the just shall live by his faith. What that means is, um, and the just shall live by his faith is a verse that is given in Habakkuk chapter 2, where God says that, write the vision down, make it plain. And it talks about evil people. And I actually came across, <laughs> I thought that would be for the benefit of a faith. I, I, I'll, if I find it, I'll send it to you. The one that's a scripture that speaks about uh, how other people prosper and why they prosper when they do evil. But, he, but as we, it, it's in Jeremiah. <laughs> it's in Jeremiah. It's actually a script. It's there in Jeremiah. I found it. I was like, wow, this is it. This is the answer to a pep's prayer. I'll send it to you. So how do we access? We access by faith first, the just shall live by his faith. Because it was answering the evil in the time. And the, sp and, and the thing about it is that Habakkuk had been given an instruction about the, the answer to, God's, to Habakkuk's question to God was write the vision down. But then there was so much evil, but God was saying the just shall live by his faith. So at this point of transitioning and gaining access through the gates, one of the ways we have to access is by faith. Because faith is what is going to cause you to wrestle. Faith is what is going, what do you see with your eye of faith? You know, because that's what faith is. Faith is the substance of things we hope for, things we've not yet seen. So we have to see through the eye of faith and see what is it that we're accessing on the other side? What is available? What is possible? So we have to access by faith and then we have to access by God's grace. Because there's nothing in us. The word of God says our righteousness is like filthy rags in front of, there's nothing in us that is a deserve. So even when the enemy accuses, we go, we say, and, and this is a season, you have to be so honest, oh my God. You have to say, it's true, I did. I did, for sure, I have done it. Not proudly, but just acknowledging honestly. It's true, God, it, it was my fault here. I, I'm the one who, for sure, I have not acted on the instruction you gave me. But give me the grace to do it. So today we've received strength. 
because Apostle Angie prayed to us for strength, for strength to access what we need. So we need to obey, we need to have a revelation, and then we need to honor the moment. Because unless you have that revelation, like Jacob, he, how did he know? Even with all his craftiness, you know, God is so interesting. Because this guy, even now, he had sent Leah, like his, his makosas were many, but he had a revelation. He was discerning the moment. He knew what he needed to do. This is where KFC checks in. <laughs> yeah. Because we are so distracted by our appetites, addictions, our desires, I, 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 flesh, that the flesh is drawing our attention away from the moment. So we need to honor this moment of transition enough to say things are not normal this is not business as usual by the time it is this time lord what are the boundaries of my transition how much time do i have do i have a week do i have a month what do you want me to do and engage and say push through do what you need to do now so that you get to the other side So he asked a question, what season of access are you in and which gates stand before you? What season of access are you in and which gates stand before you? So Napef and Shitako Apring was like, wow, wow. What season of access are you in and which gates stand before you? Yes, ma'am. Um, the other day I had a meeting with um, just some two young pastors in the city. Um, and there are messages that I need to find, but one of the things I think we need to do is just look straight forward. Don't even act like it was you. But let's just say you, both of the fasts of this year you haven't done, or all the fasts of this year, there have been like four or five messages from men of God across the continent that this month, month of, prayer, of fasting. So different men of God are doing different fasts. And so because of where we are, you must sit down and ask God what your fast is. Because one of the appetites that God forbid is threatening to destroy people is the lack of the ability to fast. So this is the season where you need to sit down because May is almost over. I don't want it to be over because these, all of these were, are pointing to me. Even me, I got an instruction. So you need to sit down and, and, and get your instruction. It's like, a, it's like, it's so crazy. It's like, it's a, I've not seen it before, but when you say, it's like a divide. It's like there's something we need to cross over. It's like a crossover. We are crossing over a divide, but there's what we also have to do to cross over to that divide. And it's going to have to do with killing the appetites, the distractions, being in the wrong place at the right time. He's, been made, he's, added, he's made me add something. You know when we say being in the right place at the right time with the right people doing the right thing, he made me add now in the right season. What's the season? That's what's triggered me to speak. Because what's the season? If you don't know your season, the season will pass. The season will pass and you don't know that this is your season. But you can only find your season by wrestling. You have to wrestle with God. It's a season of wrestling. It is, amen. Well, just, those are just samples of gates. Because <laughs> there, there are many gates. There are many gates. So wealth creation is a gate. Um, family is a gate. 
Community is a gate. Justice is a gate. Have you noticed how many land cases are currently going on or have started? So there's an issue of land justice. So when Apept was praying about justice, for me particularly, I said we need land justice. Because there's something about land and getting into your promised land. There's something about when you're getting into God's promises and land. And why there's contention right now for land. We've been talking about territories, uh, inheritance, ownership, dominion. Because when you think about cities, what is in a city? Gates are accessed. In tra when you look at it traditionally, physically, a gate is an access to a city. What is in a city? Those are economies. Those are communities. Those are ways of life, standards of living. Those are access to culture. To, to you, you know, when you take over a city, it's you either take over and then establish, or take over and continue. Does that make sense? Because like the Israelites, they took over. The reason why um, King, there's a king called Ahaziah, had a, <laughs> that king was so arrogant. First of all, the word of God says that he, he got victory, but he, not, he did not destroy the idols. So there's a thing about you can take over and destroy what is existing and build. So that's dominion, right? Have, get, getting dominion, or you can go to a land that is already existing the way it's supposed to be, and so you're just building, right? So different takeovers, but what is beyond a gate? What is beyond a gate? What is it we're accessing through this gate? What are we crossing over from into? Then God was talking about anomalies of a season. When you're in a certain season, there are some things that are supposed to happen or not happen. But we need to have that discernment and revelation. So like now, for example, the place that we are going to access, we have to have a picture of how it should look. Because you cannot tolerate what is not supposed to be there, but you also have to leave what's supposed to be there. You cannot live be beneath. We're supposed to take everything. It's everything, right? So we have to know what that picture of everything looks like. Like, for example, if God is saying we're in a season of... Um, for example, if God says that we're in a season of, what's one of the seasons, with many, many seasons? Um, if God says we're in a season of wealth creation, what does that look like? New ideas, registering businesses, you know, correcting positions, getting the logos, all those things, putting things in order, uh, beginning to get contracts. Something has to change in the direction of what you're doing in terms of actions. So you cannot be in a season of wealth creation, but there's nothing coming to you in terms of ideas, strategies. Are you getting? So you can't just be, Wah. things cannot be normal. So I liked what Apep said. She said, do not fear, do not stop putting on your shyness. So we cannot be in a season of wealth creation and we are not able to express ourselves, right? But it's a grace we can pray for and then we can, do, we can develop the skills for it. So, even in the morning, I was listening to, as I was coming, uh, I think one of the churches, they say that we're in a season of fruitfulness. So, you cannot be in a season of fruitfulness and there's not, no, like, there's devouring happening. There's something wrong with that. Like, when you're in a certain season, but it's looking like another season, there's something off with that. And it could be that the enemy is just using a gate, a, a gate or a um, legal ground that is open to access you so that you don't engage the season that you're supposed to be in. But then you see our passive, passive, passivity, yeah? that being chilled, complacent, just to go too sour. This is how my life will always look. Is robbing us the opportunity to live the abundant life God has for us. You get what I'm saying? So we can't be satisfied. I, you and I cannot be satisfied until we see what God has said about us. So we have to be radical. Radical about ourselves. I, it starts with me first. Why haven't I accessed the promises that God has given? What is wrong? 
So I have to address, like one of the areas he was addressing is delays. Saying what causes delay and how are we to deal with delay at the gate? How do you deal with delay at the gate? So it starts with having an honest uh, eh? yeah, investigation and say, God, wait, wait, wait. What is it that could have caused delay for me? And being honest in this area. So he was saying, what are the root causes? What are the root causes? And then he was reminding me, when Pastor Kawalia was, uh, was um, after everything he'd gone through and gone through the deliverance, when he was in a certain season, um, when he had started working with God and he was in this season, you know, getting to know God and all that, and he's working with God now, he's comfortable. Oh, it's a video, that video we had watched, I think, like a quarter, quarter year ago, right? If you've not watched it, the, um, it was a testimony by Pastor Kawalia of him moving from being a Satanist to the kingdom of God. You can watch it. He was saying when he got sick, because now the enemy started attacking him, he got really sick. Mara, it's cancer, it's really the heart. Like he was dying, like the hospital had declared him dead. I think he was even being taken home because now you have no hope. And Jesus appeared to him. But you see, the thing about that was he was not in a season of being sick. Because he had been delivered, he had been saved by God. His season was not sickness. His season was walking out salvation and the, and the blessings of salvation. It wasn't his season to be sick. That is not where he was. But what was the enemy doing? Using a doorway that was open in his life to access him, to cause him to be sick. So what surprised me was Jesus said, I heal you from generational rebellion. He didn't say, I heal you from cancer. He didn't say, I heal you of heart disease. He said, I heal you from generational rebellion. I was like, what? Like, so there could be things eating at us that are not, the, the root cause is not the thing we are seeing. So what is it that's eating at me that I have not been able to access a certain level of what God has promised me? Let me tell you, this thing, he was just, I felt like he's chokorying something, you know, like he's just doing this to me because I'm like, why am I satisfied with just being told, oh, you will be this, oh, you will do that, but there are still some many things I'm yet to see. I'm like, no. I have to do business with God. Then he was saying, so what are the root causes of delay? No. What are the root causes of delay? And one of the root causes we've been prayed about today is fear. Another one which interestingly Shtakwa mentioned as she was talking was pride. Because Hey Jesus, forgive me. God knows, God knows. Even if it doesn't happen, it's a big deal. Pride. Because within myself, do I want to admit that I don't have it? So Sin could be hidden sin. Um, so it's time to get radical for show me the particular sin I must repent about. Show me. And the way that God speaks to you, whether he speaks to you in dreams, whether he sends his prophets, if he needs to write it on a matatu in front of you, you know, the way a mat is passing and you're just like, guy, that thing is talking to me, convicting me. Whatever way, he'll show you. If it is fear, a lot, of, a lot of it is fear. Fear to deal with. And fear to become. So you become immobilized. And you push it at the back of your mind. So it's always bothering you, but uh, let's do this. Today we need to work. Tomorrow we need to do this. You're always pushing it away. Because you don't want to deal with it. Many root causes. Only the Holy Spirit can reveal. So... In the, in the, what has caused delays at the gates? The things that you are yet to access in your life, cross over into. What has caused delay? So my prayer for us, myself, very heavily included in that prayer is, may God show us what the causes of our delays are so that we radically. And then you know when you're being treated for something, 
if something is really eating at you, you really even sometimes don't even care how the treatment comes. You're just like, I just want this thing gone. We have to be radical. We have to stop sharing secrets with the enemy. We have to be open, honest. It takes a certain vulnerability to do what you need to do to access what you need to access. You know, it takes vulnerability. God made me... <laughs> So I was telling, oh God, when, when last Sunday when we left church, I ended up going to my grandmother's, then my mother happened to be there. So I, saw, ah, so I have to obey quickly. So I said, mom, even before anything started, please, I'm from church, this is what has happened, please forgive me. I had to say it in front of everyone. I was feeling so, ah, this is so hard. My shusha was there, my aunt was there, my my young cousins were there the way they judge me because of being all this spiritual person and they, they keep laughing when I do things, you know. And I was like, just laugh. But like one of them, I prayed for them. I'm like, she has problems with her hands. I'm praying for her. Her cousin is laughing. Imagine and I'm praying. But I told her, when, when God heals you, just come back and make sure you tell me, eh? Because he's going to do it. So imagine, this is, these are the people who I have to confess in front of. But I was like, you know what? This thing is happening now. Before something happens and then I don't have another moment. And she prayed. And she prayed. So, radical. I don't care. I'm coming for my healing, for my deliverance, for my wealth, for my marriage, for my family, for my community. I'm coming for it. But what will it take me? Because if I don't deal with myself, how will I know what to ask for from God? How will I know? Because first I have to say, it's true. Then I say, okay, now God, because it's my fault. See, you just have mercy on me and help me with this person or help me with this thing or give me just a reprieve from this. It's idea too. So I think we'll close with this. What do you need to do to access the gate? So these are the questions. I'll just, because of the time, we'll just go through them. But then I think we need to go and sit with this um, and do business with God, right? Uh, so what are the actions God has been requiring of you to do? So what do you need to do to access the gate, whatever the gate is? First of all, what's the gate? Define the gates. Because we prayed about them, and there are many, many, many. So what are the actions God has been requiring of you to do? What are the outstanding instructions you are yet to obey? So list them. So these things, fresh things that God wants us to do, he's been giving us instructions, but then there are outstanding instructions. And some of them are very simple. Remember that? Prophecy of the lady and the children. She had to name her children. You remember that? It's simple, right? Simple things. What has been stopping you from obeying the instructions? Be honest. What is stopping me from doing the thing God has asked me to do? You know, and it could be that you're saying, oh, it's money. But me, sometimes, if, if your answer is going to money, first ask, because God can never give you an instruction that is not provided for. Is it money you don't have, or is it faith? What is it? So let's be real with our assessments. It is not the moment for milk. It is the meat moment. Let's be radically. What will happen? What will happen? What will happen if I'm radically honest about what I need? about what has been stopping me. And then, the thing that has been stopping you, remember, you can only treat what you accurately diagnose. Even when you go to hospital, if a doctor is inaccurate in his diagnosis, no matter how much he tries to heal that thing, it is not healing because the diagnosis is wrong. Same with development. If you don't problem analyze nice, properly, the solution you offer will be meaningless because you're treating a problem that does not exist. So in our problem analysis, in our diagnosis, whatever you want to call it, 
it has to be accurate. For it to be accurate, I think you and I need to work with the Holy Spirit to properly diagnose the issue. Because you could call it one thing, but it's another. You could call it one thing, but it's another. And then what needs to happen for me, for you to overcome that hindrance? What needs to happen? What needs to happen? And some of us, it's our mi mindset. It's that thing Apostle George likes to say, when an elephant has been tied for too long, even when it has the strength enough to break away from that rope, in its mind it doesn't think it can. So we're in that moment. That's the moment we are in. Hmm. And you know, Jesus was, uh, the Lord was saying, like Jeremiah 12, 5 to 6, he said, So Jeremiah, if you are worn out in this foot race with men, what makes you think? You can race against horses. And if you can't keep your wits during times of calm, what's going to happen when troubles break loose like the Jordan in flood? It, it was so sobering. Allow it to convict you, not to condemn you. Don't allow the enemy to speak to your mind after this. This is not a condemnation message. With God, all things are possible. You know, I like that scripture. Because it says it's very hard for a rich man to, to enter the kingdom of heaven. But you know what I like about that scripture? It's, it says it's like an elephant trying to go through, and a camel trying to go through, eye of a needle. But then it says, it's a gate, because it's a narrow, the eye of the needle, yeah, it's a, that is the eye of the needle. The hump, the, and the thing, for it to go through. It has to crawl through. But then the scripture says, oh, that's amazing. It's a great scripture. Hallelujah to going to Israel. <laughs> but then it says, but with God, all things are possible. So it's not impossible for the impossible to happen because with God, all things are possible. Hmm. Yeah. Mm, on the world. So, yeah, yeah. He, of the world. Yeah. So it was possible with God to let the world go, because He would get more wealth. But he, yeah. Yeah. So that you let it go. So that you pass through the gate. Yeah. Yeah. So what are we letting go? Is what we are saying. Because <laughs> we have faith in jobs. In rich husbands. God forbid. So it's that thing. It's seeing here, not there. So we need to see. <laughs> Who sees there? Wow. Mm. Yeah.
Ja. Wow. So what we need to let go, what are we letting go of? That is causing us to hold on, to not access, to not reach forward. And that is getting stuck. Wow. So let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we bless you this afternoon. We give you glory and praise. We thank you for your word. We pray that we will honor you by sitting with it, um, processing it, because it keeps unfolding. Even now as we speak with the pep, it's just unfolding. It means that there's many more layers to it than we've even been able to explore in this time. So help us to unfold it in our quiet times, in our conversations with each other. Help us to explore these things that to us may look like mysteries sometimes, but they are not you. You know everything. And by the time you're saying, you're telling us to let go so that we can pass through that gate, that narrow gate. It's because you've seen ahead. You already know. So help us to trust your wisdom because it's absolute. Our, our knowledge is limited to the place we are in. But your wisdom is, goes beyond. It's absolute. So help us to trust in you. Help us to obey you. Help us to move with you. To walk in step with you, Holy Spirit. Um, reveal to us things that cause delay in our lives. Like that, continuing to hold on to things we need to let go of. Um, fear. Uh, break, break us off of fear. Show us what we need to do to break off these things that continue to hold us. If there's a sin, we need to repent whether it is our own individual sin, whether it's a family generational sin, whether it's a national sin, whether it's a sectoral sin. Whatever it is, we need to stand in the gap as intercessors and repent for. We pray that you would reveal that to us. Whatever actions we need to take um, to move into this next place, to cross over, to walk into the gate, to access the next, Lord. And this next is just, it's not just a normal next. It's, our, it's a transition into into a different life, into, into the promises of God for our, for our lives. It's a huge thing. And so whatever we need to lay down, help us to lay down. Whatever we need to pick up, whatever actions we need to take, uh, whatever instructions we've delayed obeying, by, by the power of the Holy Ghost, the anointing that was released to us in the, in, during the worship um, service, Lord, the strength that we received through the anointing and the communion that we took, Father, may you enable us to move forward, to forge forward, to move in victory, to move in victory even in our minds, that we possess in our minds, even by the time we are possessing physically, in our minds it's done, because in the spirit it's done. It's already done. So help us to align, help our soul to align, help our body to align, help our environment to align to the truth of the word of God in our lives. Holy Spirit, we bless you. We thank you for, you work so miraculously. You, you, you're amazing in how you do the things that you do. I pray that even in this crossing over and in this transition into, and in this accessing the gates, that Lord, just the same way you have favored us this morning and honored us this morning and blessed us this morning, by going ahead to already give us what we need for this word that you're releasing, we pray that even where we are going, we will already have received what we need. By the time we get there, it will be done. So I pray for the gift of faith, that you would anoint us with the gift of faith, Lord. That we would have faith to take the next step and the next step. And that even as we take those steps of faith, that Lord, we know you will meet us. And we know that the results of those steps will be multiplied by you. Will be increased by you. They will have impact. They will be full of your power because it's in obedience to your word. Holy Spirit, we celebrate you. Help us to fast. Give us the grace to fast. Give us the grace to pray. Give us the grace to tarry. Give us the grace to wrestle. Give us the wisdom to have conversations with you. Give us the wisdom to table things in front of you, Lord, that we would have conversations with you about matters that are weighty. Help us to not lose focus by being distracted by our day-to-day. -day. Our day-to-day -day is good. But the thing about our day-to-day -day is it's an answer to a prayer we said some time ago. Now we need to shift into the next. 
and we are grateful for what we have today. But we pray that we don't lose the focus of where we are supposed to go and to, do, to go into the extra to be able to do the things we are supposed to do for us to access the next. Holy Spirit, I pray that no one is going to be left behind, that we will not miss our moment of visitation. We will not miss this season, Lord. We will not be disqualified, Father. We will do what we need to do to access what we need to access. So, Lord, have mercy on us where we have not done what we are supposed to do, but then give us the grace and the strength to do it and the wisdom so that we are found when you, when you, when you are considering, when you are moving us, Lord, that you find us to be, you know, you, you can say, well done. Um, well done, my son. Move on to the next. So, Father, help us to fulfill our obligations um, by the power of the Holy Spirit. Give us the, your word says that you, you do not give us the spirit of fear, but the spirit of love and of sound mind. So, Father, have your way even in our minds. We surrender everything to you about who we are. We lay down our burdens. We take up your yoke, which is easy, and your burden, which is light. We give you glory, Lord. We know that we are not alone in this. We know that your, our present help. We know that we are walking this journey with you, so we will not be afraid. Instead, we will lean into your wisdom. We will lean into your absoluteness, that you know everything, for you are everywhere. You are everywhere before time, in time, after time. You are everywhere geographically. You are everywhere we are not. And so we will lean into your absolute wisdom, Father, for us to be able to be and to do everything that we need to be and to do now and forevermore. So we thank you, Lord, for this moment. And we receive it in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Thank you, Apostle Angie. Thank you. Thank you, Apostle Angie. I don't think there's anything to add. Eh? That was a deep sermon, deep service. I don't think there's anything to add. Let's just go and do. Let's go and action what God is speaking to us. Amen. Amen. Um, let's just go action what God is speaking to us. Amen. The only thing maybe I'll say, Father, just ensure that we're in the right place at the right time with the right people doing the right thing but there's an emphasis on the right season. Let us be in the right season. Make sure it happens. Do whatever you need to do to ensure that we're in the right season. I'm also feeling something about visibility. So help us to be seen. There are people that need to see us. We need to be seen. So I'm going to pray that we are seen. And I'm also going to add to that accurate positioning. That we are accurately positioned in the place that God wants us to be. Accurately positioned, seen. I feel like we need to be seen geographically. Who is that who needs to see you? I feel that like that may be more marketplace. Somebody needs to see you geographically. Leaders of regions, they need to see you. In the scope of the work that you do, you need to be seen as a leader. Who is the leader that needs to see you as a leader and put you into a position of leadership? You need to be seen professionally. Who needs to see you professionally? Who needs to mentor you? Who needs to take up your hand? Who needs to create a space for you? Who needs to create a way for you? They must see you. Who needs to see you financially? Who needs to see you? Who needs to give you the resources? Who needs to partner with you? Who needs to see the potential in you? where resources and finances are concerned. Who needs to see you socially? Yesterday I prayed that, I pray Shitakwa's husband saw her on the stage because God gave you a platform. And there are so many different people and this has happened at Mavuno several times. But for the rest of us, who needs to see us socially? Who needs to engage with us socially? Who needs to see us physically? Who needs to see us physically? 
who needs to have access to us? Who needs to see the way our mind thinks? Who needs to see us socially? Who needs to see our solically, sorry? Who needs to see our mind, our will, and our emotions? I'm hearing the word who. Who needs to see our interpretation? And who needs to see us spiritually? But I feel like God has seen us spiritually. May you receive ability to see spiritually. There is an ability where you need to see things spiritually, all of us. And I decree and declare that that happens in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Yeah, celebrate Jesus.